Hello and welcome to Conference Showcase. I'm your host Gary Leland. Now if you found this show on Facebook, YouTube, or another video sharing site, please check out my website, conferenceshowcase.com. It's the place to find all the videos I'm going to record from all the conferences I'm going to attend. Now if you like this show and what I'm doing here, please tell your friends about it. Maybe share with us some friends on Facebook. I tell them about Conference Showcase. You may also want to subscribe if you really enjoy this show. Now in this episode, I'm bringing you another session from the Dallas Fort Worth WordPress Meetup Group. Now if you're not familiar with this group, you really need to check out their website. And it's located at meetup.com slash DFW WordPress. Now in this episode, I'm bringing you a session with Tony Sakala titled, Turbocharge Your Business with WordPress. Let's watch it now. So we, we had a really great year. We, um, what have we done? We started off January with a keynote address from Mike Warren. Mike, if you know him, founded Pegasus News, and uh, he's been really a, a great visionary in the field of local marketing. He now is with a company, he's founded a company called Speakeasy. It's a great brand, uh, like his logo and all that stuff looks like an old bar, you know? And uh, he works with the Dallas Morning News. He's in fact the social media provider, social media partner with the Dallas Morning News. So uh, they're doing uh, social media, working with uh, local businesses to figure out how do you do marketing in this new digital age. Uh, he spoke in January and we had a, a whole list of awesome speakers. If you go to the meetup website, you can look at the previous meetups, see who spoke. And um, some of them were videotaped, but Gary started taping uh, just recently, about a couple months ago. So uh, to pick up the videos, uh, you can go to conferenceshowcase.com. You want to say a few words about? No, Gary's. I just want to say. I'll say a few. Conference, conference showcase. Conferenceshowcase.com. So uh, not only are our our, our talks videotaped, but the, the Emerging Tech Conference that we had in June of this year were uh, was videotaped. Most of the talks were videotaped. Who was at e uh, Emerging Tech? A handful. Okay, well, next year, I'm sure all of you will be in Emerging Tech because it's going to be uh, much more awesome even than this year. We're focusing, last year, this last year, we focused the entire year on content marketing. And it sort of culminated in a workshop that we had this morning that really focused on uh, you know, what is content marketing and uh, how to do it for your business. How can we translate the ideas of content marketing into some and strategies and about 15 of you were here for that and um, had had a pretty awesome experience. What did you think, Mitch? It was awesome. <laughs> Your son was awesome. I learned to be awesome. He learned to be awesome. That's exactly. the way you get your rankings, so you're awesome. Exactly. We talked about, you know, what happens uh, in this world uh, of what the SEO people call, you know, this penguin and panda world, uh, where Google in April said, uh, if you've been doing anything related to search engine optimization, buying links or optimizing links or over-optimizing your site, if there could be such a thing, you over-optimize your site. Does that make any sense to you? No, of course not. But Google makes a lot of sense. So if, if you did any of that, your rankings dropped like a rock in April time frame. And throughout the year, there have been a lot of tweaks to try to fix what Penguin and Panda did. But what did we learn? We learned that you should be awesome. Just remember those two words, be awesome. Uh, then people will want to link to your site automatically. Uh, your content will be so awesome that you'll rank in the search engines for it. So how do you create awesome content? Well, we covered that this morning, but it certainly is a deep uh, conversation that we've had uh, throughout the year uh, with uh, K. Byfield spoke about two, three months ago. And uh, we've had Really, the topic's been covered uh, here and there all year long. And it, you know, it turns out to be uh, the easy uh, easy way to stay in the search engines uh, and rank highly, but you have to put the work in. It's not easy to write great content, and that's what we talked about this morning. Today, today's presentation is going to be about 
turbocharging your business. And so obviously, I um, I, I fell short a little bit on the um, title because uh, probably should have had another 20 or 30 people here if they knew how awesome the presentation was going to be. Because, <laughs> because turbocharging your business is, is just a little bit vague. Really, the concept today is how does WordPress go beyond just being a blogging platform and a site building platform? We, all, we were all pretty you know, wowed by WordPress when it was first being developed. It was great for blogging. We were like, all right, this is great. Then, uh, version two point something or other, they introduced pages, might have been just around there. They introduced something called pages, and so not only do you get posts, but you can write pages. And so you have posts and pages, and you can build a website. You can build a five-page website, and you can build a 150-page website, a thousand pages. Could, could you, could you so, speak a little louder? Even louder. Okay. You, you, you hit, here. oh, in that corner of the room, we got some trouble. Hold on, I'm gonna make this a little bit louder. I think it's a little bit low. All right, that's much better, isn't it? No? Oh, boy. More. All right, that's great. I'm sure it's going to be even better for the video, too. Gary's readjusting. <laughs> I have a little bit of laryngitis. Uh, speaking all morning, and, uh, and I was uh, part, I mean, not partying, networking all week. <laughs> Tuesday was uh, something, Wednesday. I mean, it was, it was a big week. Uh, I saw Mitch at most of the events. Uh, we had a good time. But Dallas is a great community. If you don't know about the events I'm talking about, one of our sponsors is uh, the DFW Search Engine, uh, Search TFW Social Media Marketing Group. They meet on the Monday of the fourth uh, uh, week of the month. And uh, Stephanie Ng runs that group and uh, does a great job. And it's all about social media. And they meet over at uh, they're meeting in Aniston now. They used to meet at Canyon Creek. And then Tuesday, I was at something else. I don't know what I was at Tuesday. But Wednesday, I was at Search Engine Marketing Association. And the DFW Search Engine Marketing Association is having a conference next month, November 12th, which is a Monday, all day. Who has nothing to do on a Monday? No, I don't think so. I don't know why they scheduled it. But I'm going, taking the Monday off. It starts at like 7.30. Uh, Chris Brogan's going to be there. That's a name, recognizable name. Sean Jackson's going to be there. He's the CFO of Copy Blogger. Sean gave the keynote address at uh, the Virgin Tech Conference. So uh, check it out. It's uh, stateofsearch.org. And uh, if you use the, pass, the password, uh, the, password the, the coupon code DFWWP, you save $99. So it's a the password, the, the, the coupon code is DFWWP, like our hashtag. So yeah, Dan Sturdivant is the president of DFW Search Engine Marketing Association, and uh, he couldn't be here. He's got a kiddo that had something to do today. So uh, he usually is here to talk about the group, but it's a great group. If you want to learn about what's the latest in search engine marketing, if you want to be like a year ahead of everybody else, you want to hear what search engine marketing is all about, search engine optimization, you go to that group and the people there, Jeremy Vest, um, Mark Barrera, uh, Rob Garner, uh, Rob just came out with a book, Social Search, is it called Social and Search, Search, Social, uh, and he presented topics from it, blow your mind kind of stuff. And when, you, when you hear what Rob talked about this week, you'll be like, Oh, that makes a lot of sense because think about it. What did Google do? Google said we can't trust links anymore because you creeps were buying them, buying links. So now we're going to find out where you are in the social networks and we're going to figure out who you are and who you're linking to and we're going to use those social signals to figure out you know, what's valuable and who has authority. So the idea going forward when you think about it, it makes more sense. In the past, it was a web page that had the rank. The well, page can be altered, and who knows who's writing the page? So maybe it's a robot writing a splog. Everybody know what a splog is? You know, that's a spam blog. 
they have programs to write them. You just put in a keyword, Viagra or something like that, and mm -hmm. it creates like a thousand page blog for you. And so Google was not happy about those, and that's why all that came about. But now it's social signals, so we're learning how to create pages with authority and, uh, and build pages that link to other people and as in when you're in your Google Plus and you're circling other people, you don't realize it, but you're telling Google about yourself, and you're telling Google about your authority. You're telling Google who who's your colleague, who you sleep with. I mean, all well, but you are. I mean, you're giving these signals to Google, and they're using them in the search. They're using it to develop better search results, and they're using it to screw you. No, I'm just kidding. You didn't get to help you, help you to rank better. So, so you gotta pay attention. Pay attention to who's in your in your social circles. Who's in? Who are you circling? And what are you saying? You don't think Google reads that you call? Nobody else knows. When you said it says you circled them, but Google knows when you circled them that that circle says colleagues, or that circle says video experts, and so you know they're running the ship back there. So. That's what Rob Garner talked about on Google Tuesday. Google knows what I call my circle names. Google knows what oh, you call your circle names. Oh, okay. Mason's got a problem. Now, he's, <laughs> now I've embarrassed Mason. Which has embarrassed me. I didn't want yeah. anyone to know that. See, oh, Google's on the other end of that computer. So all the boys and girls that people have slept with. <laughs> just kidding. That was exactly the name of those circles. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. It's called social media for a reason. They're not public circles. <laughs> <laughs> so you know where you go and what you do. You know, they're being they're being tracked. And so, how did Rob Garner talked about this a long long winded way of saying this. DFW Search Engine Marketing Association is awesome. It's dfwsem.org, and there's like 150 a year for individuals and 300 for companies or something. And they meet once a month, like the fourth Wednesday. So then notice how, uh, why I set my meeting up on the fourth Saturday. Is that at each, each day of the week, I get progressively more networked, progressively more coarse, but there are progressively more people coming here, because some of you I met at those meetups. And Thursday was the DFW search Social Media Club, SMC, Social Media Club. It's a great group of people. They meet at the Angelica, the, like the fourth Thursday of the month. It's a great group of people. They, they're they like a really high-end group. I mean, when they bring somebody in, it's like a Chris Brogan or a Brian Clark or a, a, last night we had a, Scott Stratton. Two nights ago, Scott Stratton spoke. He was sick, he was food poisoning, everything like that, and he was still awesome. He wrote the book of Business Awesome, so he really knows how to be awesome. So that was a good time. So anyway, enough about other groups, how about us? Today we're going to talk about how WordPress can help you help your business, help you run your business. Um, just a you know quick overview: turbocharge your business with WordPress. We all use it to blog, but do we use it as an ongoing tool, 24/7? Is WordPress working for you? Is it gathering leads? So we know it's marketing for you, but is it gathering leads? <clears throat> is it responding to requests? Is it handling customer service complaints? What is it doing for you? Is it is it collecting money for you? I mean, a lot of these things, when you think about it, you wouldn't necessarily think WordPress through collecting money on your behalf, but it could. So that's me, uh, my little <coughs> wordle. The net is always on. So it's always on 24 seven, whether you're working your blog or not, your blog's working for you, your website's working for you. And so when you start to think about, well, maybe your business has some employees, <clears throat> maybe it doesn't have any employees, but your website is a tireless robot. When you program it properly, it'll work tirelessly for you building your business. And I think that's one of the big trends that we're gonna start to see in the next decade is, is we start to develop artificial intelligence and start to develop uh, the whole notion of automation working for you. Why do you think Google is so powerful? Well, they wrote one little script called the Googlebot, and it went out and 
and worked tirelessly for years scouring all the websites and figuring out you know what was on each website and they brought all that information home and then they built the google search index and then a couple years later they took the idea from another company to sell the ads that's a separate there was a separate thing that came together when the, google first started they didn't really know what they were doing they didn't have adsense and adwords but that one little program did an awesome thing went out and indexed the web now none of us have that sort of horsepower to go out and index the web, but you can let, you can program your computer, you can program your website to do awesome things for you, as we're gonna talk a little bit about today. <coughs> so what do you have to say, and who wants to hear it? Your your web, your web already is going to be communicating for you, it's gonna be building that audience as you develop content for it. That's what WordPress does really well. You have your message, your writing, your photography, your design, your music, your video, talk a lot about writing and blogging, uh, but WordPress is pretty awesome at handling your video. I mean, obviously, if you're doing video, you're pushing it out to multiple places, you're pushing it out to YouTube, which is the number two search engine on the planet. It is the place where people discover more knowledge than ever before. So if you haven't started using video, you might want to think about how you incorporate it. We talked this morning in the content marketing about using images, and an image is worth a thousand words, I mean, how much is a video worth? And if you're not a video expert, think about how you can creatively use video. Uh, people put together videos of pictures, you know, you can, there's software that strings together just pictures and texts, and you can end up making an awesome sort of Ken Burns type of video uh, of just of images. There's lots of ways to go there. And music, we don't think about music, we don't think about audio too much except for the podcaster. Who's a podcaster in the room? There's a stuff. podcaster, yeah, one, two, yeah. Gary's a podcaster. So, you know, getting your content out there is what WordPress is really good at because it gives you a place, it gives you a home. Sure, you have your, you have your YouTube video, you have your iTunes, you have your MP3 on third-party sites, but then you, you bring it back, you in, embed those videos on your page, and you code them up, and Google starts to realize that that video is associated with you, and you start to rank. So Google, WordPress enables communication. It's not only pushing out the information, it's getting comments, starting a dialogue. Who here has gone out there and read a post and thought, hey, I should, I should comment on this post. I'm really interested in commenting on Yeah, a couple of people, like half of people. I mean, you go out there, you, you want to get involved in the dialogue. And some sites are great at that. Some sites, there's a post and there's like 100 comments. It's just, what are they doing differently? You know, you have to ask yourself, oh, how do you start a conversation and engage your viewer? engage people to, to, have, to, to go in and, and, and type up a comment. It, it takes effort and you have to be motivated. So WordPress allows that. Every post at the bottom, if you don't turn posts off, if you don't turn comments off, you'll end up uh, with a little box that says, uh, you know, reply here, click this. And depending on your settings, either people can just comment freely or they have to log in. There's a whole host of discussion settings depending on the type of blog that you have, how you'll set it up so people can either immediately post or have to register, things like that. Uh, in starting that dialogue, you're not only engaging your customer, but you're getting information. One of the most important things that Google always does, a lot of love-hate relationship with Google, you might, might have picked up on, they're so smart because every time you use Google Analytics or every time you give them your information, they're, they're crunching the numbers. You know, how do they know what a good bounce rate is? Well, they know what a bounce rate is for the whole planet. They practically, everybody's using Google Analytics, and they know that two out of three people, when they go to a page on the web, they're gonna hit the back button right away. 66% of people just bounce away. That's called what a bounce is, is called. Is it right? What a bounce is? Bounce is Someone goes to your page and then they go right away. They, they don't read any further. They, you've not engaged them enough. So how do you get that bounce rate down? How do you engage people 
to be on your website longer. So that's the challenge. What do you do? Getting feedback from your readers is really hard. I think, again, like most things, like most tweets, most comments, most posts, the, 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 the number that's most prevalent uh, of comments is zero. Most posts get zero comments. Most tweets don't get retweeted. So the challenge here is, you know, how can you be more engaging? So maybe you don't know. I mean, you know what's good content, but maybe you don't know. So you have to start measuring. You figure out which of my posts got some comments and, and do more of that. You have to measure. So Google, this is a little overview. I mean, what is, we already know. WordPress is good for writing. It's a personal blog, an online magazine, a book. It's your home on the web. When WordPress came out, it was the first real software that you could load up and put on your domain and create a blog. Before that, you had to go to like a blogger or, or movable type or some of these other sites where you, you developed your, your content, but it was on someone else's real estate. And the folks at Copyblogger, who I'll quote here and there because they're so awesome, they talk about, you want to develop your content on real estate that you own. If you've ever been kicked off a website or violated terms of service, uh, your content's gone. You're, they close up shop and it's over. A friend of mine said the other day, his YouTube channel was closed. YouTube, Google is very strict. They summarily closed this account. He says, see, you were, you were trespassing, the, violating the codes of conduct and, and copyright violations. And he's like, it was me and my camera, no one else. There was no copyright violation. It was me and my camera. And they wrote to them as, oh, OK, well, someone, someone stopped complaining about it. So you know, we can open it up again. But it could happen to you. If you're on WordPress.com, you're WordPress.com is pretty open, pretty pretty cool. There, but there's terms of service. There are things you can't do on another person's site. So you, you want to create your content on your own server. The copy blogger guys talk about this over and over. So you have your own server. That's what WordPress is great about. It's your home on the web. It's stable, mature, good looking, open, and extensible. <coughs> we love WordPress for all these reasons because we're like at WordPress 3.4.2 right now. I mean, we've come so far that when you click the upgrade button, like a few minutes later, you're at the next version and everything works just fine. Some of us remember the old days where you like click the update button and you're like, how many backups do I have? I mean, is it ever gonna you know, work? And, you know, it's really stable. It's really, really stable. It's, it's very, very powerful. Uh, you, you click that button and one, two, three, you're upgraded to the next version, and it's more secure. Uh, last month, we heard from Derek Schaefer and Rob Holmes. Derek is the uh, owner of Web Synthesis, and, and that's, that's Copy Bloggers. Uh, Synthesis is Copy Bloggers hosting division, and uh, it's very high-end hosting focused on WordPress. And, and it's not for everybody, but when you're on it, you have a very fast and very secure server. And uh, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> WordPress is, is a lot more secure now. And oh, that's the security. And so basically, what, what Derek told us last month is, if you are on WordPress 3.4.1, you know, go home or do it right now. Press the button and upgrade. Because the reason they moved to 3.4.2 is because there is a pretty bad security breach. And not a lot of people know about it. But the people who do know about it you know, might be the bad guys. So keep your site up to date and back it up all the time and you'll be fine. And the other reason we love WordPress is because it's extensible. That's what we're gonna talk about today. It's, what's this, what do I mean by extensible? It's got 10,000 plugins. I mean, there's a plugin for everything. There's probably a plugin, I don't know, for making toast. I mean, there's just a million things. Uh, 
not every plugin is great, but they've done a great job of helping you sort out what's good and what's bad. We'll talk about how to vet a plugin. So again, you own your own data, you dominate the search engines, you can easily manage multimedia and easily manage external data. You own your own data, dominate the search engines. Matt Cutts in 2009 said, WordPress takes care of 80 to 90% of the mechanics of search engine optimization, but, but don't have to play any games, you don't have to do anything special, you just do it. Put your content out there and it's good. One of my clients is in that list. There he is. That's a WordPress site, H2 Chiropractic. Back in 2009, he ranked. He chose to go with another web developer. <laughs> Don't, if you Google that right now, I don't think he's number one anymore. Oh, I get away with it. Anyway, WordPress is great because you can build a map. You can embed a map with like one or two clicks. There's like uh, several WordPress uh, plugins for mapping, and, and some of them even have the little link that says, give me the directions, and it'll, it'll take you right to, it'll take people right to your business. So, how do you get started with WordPress? You guys know you're already here. <coughs> you work with local developers, or come to the meetups and get networked and get started. WordPress. So the core of the today's talk is really how is how is business today different than business yesterday? What if you want to dominate? If you want to be a leader in your industry, what do you have to do? Well, I like to think of the new age of, of business is really the old age was everything was made in the factory, and you made things, and things had to be shipped, things had weight. Things were, were hard to, to move about, and, and they got old and you lost them and all that sort of thing. But we're in, we're in the information era, and basically each one of us has like a digital studio where you can create the kind of world that you want, create the kind of content that you want. You can, with a press of one button, you, know, you press the publish button, and you're sending those bits all around the world. You're sending them to Google, you're sending them to Yahoo. All these search engines are getting pinged. And your information is out there on the web to be discovered. So, like it or not, even if you're a crafts person, an artist, or you make jewelry, or you do something in the real world, like it or not, all of us are publishers today. And all of us are in charge of managing our information. And so the better we can be at it, that's why, I, I'm, again, I talked about this morning, who are you preaching to the choir? You know, It's like, yes, I'm preaching to the choir. You guys already know that this is important. That's why you're here. You guys already know that WordPress is important, that blogging is important, that content marketing is important, uh, that you're on the right platform to do all these things. I mean, it's just, you can do it yourself. You can roll your own content. You can develop with other systems, but the time and energy you'll spend fighting the code to do all these things is much better spent in WordPress developing the pure content, writing the blogging, writing the blog posts, or developing your images, music, video, what have you. So what's the first impression people have of your business? When, when, when we develop sites for clients, how many people are developers? About half? We have developers, designers, we have about a third <coughs> folks here developing websites for their clients. What's the first impression people have of your business? And you, you say, hey, I'm, I'm do this, I do that. I mean, what do you do? I mean, you go to Google, or you find their website, and you, you, you go to their homepage. You want to figure out, you know, who, who are they? And, you know, so that impression is, is important. It's, it's, of course, it's their website. And so developing the website to be friendly, to the customer or the prospect, and making a good first impression is probably the, the most important thing you can do. Uh, remember the bounce rate, it's you know, two out of three people. They go to the site and bang, they hit the back button. They're back to Google, they're back to YouTube, whatever they were doing before. Fate Poly, Facebook now, right? 
Mason? They're on Facebook. Mason's busy working out. He's fixing his circles. <laughs> I can see. It. <laughs> oh no. He really is. I see it from Drupal, Tony. So yeah, it's your website. So how do you greet them? I mean, what does your homepage look like? What are you saying to people when they first get there? Are you, are you welcoming them? Are you inviting them? Are you giving them something for free? Are you giving them an impression? That, I'm not using any pictures here. I don't want to, in, I don't want to implicate anyone as to what is a good website, what's not a good website. I think we all know. We've talked about it. There's been plenty of meetups this year on content strategy, content marketing. What is a good homepage? How do you make that first impression? If, if that first impression doesn't reflect your brand, doesn't reflect who you want to be, how, what kind of awesome, as Scott Stratton would say, you know, what kind of awesome you know, are you, what are you showing? That's your very first impression. If, if you don't get that right, you really don't necessarily get a second chance. They're going to hit that back button. Uh, do you try to get to know people? Are you, when someone comes into your home, someone comes into your business, you say, what do you say to them? I mean, first thing you say is, how can I help you? What are you here for? The website doesn't get that chance necessarily. The website says, this is what I'm about. Here's my menu. I got 150 items to choose from. I have a menu that's so big, it's wrapping around. How many things? I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this, and then it wraps. You know, it's you can't help it because you just want to say everything right up there on the menu. You don't want to hide anything. You don't you want it to be all out there. And so as a user interface designer, that's what brought me to Texas. I, Texas Instruments hired me as a user interface designer. They needed user interface design bad because you know they're they're famous for designing a watch that needed two hands to operate. <laughs> so needless to say, the user interface design group was dissolved shortly afterwards. And, and now they just they still pretty much do chips. They're good at chips. There's no there's no UI. <laughs> Uh, so how do you get to know them? What are you asking people when they get to your website? And so go to the to the leaders. I mean, I'd say go to copyblogger.com. Go to people who are really converting. They understand conversion. They understand how to bring the user in from an outside stranger circle to an inside interested circle to the next sort of level of the what the salespeople call the funnel, you know, in closer and closer to your business. And are you easy to contact? Probably half of the people here in this room are small business owners, you know, you have a telephone number, you have an email address, you have a fax number. Uh, you're, you, you're the kind of business that people are gonna either call or they drive up to. And you know how many websites I go to? and you can't find the phone number. You've got to dig, how do I contact them? And you're trying to get a phone number, you're trying, all you want to do is pick up the phone and call them. You know, these days, the mobile web, if your phone number is formatted properly, they all have to do is tap on it. And it brings up uh, in Android, and I know it works on an iPhone, I'm sure it works on Android too. You tap on the number and it says, you want to call this number? And you're good to go, calling the number. So, the first impression of your business, make sure you design it so that you're easy to reach. And can they ask questions? Uh, I think probably the most underrated page on a website is the contact page, is the feedback page. I mean, most people come to your website, they have a question, they have a problem that they want solved. And maybe you should have more than one contact page. Maybe you should have 10 contact tech pages. I don't know what your business is, but um, I'm, bringing this up because this is part of the talk, this is part of the automation, this is part of the turbocharging. If your website is only about broadcasting information and blasting it out to people, then you're just talking at them. Uh, you want to be able to figure out who's coming to your site have, and start a dialogue with them. And that dialogue is generally on the web. It's um, a web form. And WordPress has a, a million plugins for web forms. Uh, there's just the basic ones, and there's fancier ones. Oh, there's now a really good one built into uh, uh, Jetpack. Jet Jetpack. Jet it's phenomenal. One using 
using it now. She's using it now. She's using it now, moving off gravity flux. Yes. F I fixed my oh, good. You fixed your okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. So Jetpack already has one. Contact. It's called. What is it called? The awesome contact form. Yeah, it's the awesome contact. It's something like that. And uh, just turn it on in Jetpack, or you can use Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms is. Uh, Oh, and of course, if they ask a question, do they get a response? When people send you an email on your website, I mean, do you look at your email at the end of the day, or do you have your iPhone? Does it ping you? Does it go into a special folder? Do you get a text? Um, how is that feedback loop? Is it tight? Is it loose? Is it sloppy? And when someone orders a product on my wife's store, we get a text immediately, and we know that the order's in within a few seconds. And if we're in the office, uh, we're running analytics. Uh, besides Google Analytics, does anybody name any other analytics in the room? Quantcast. No. Quantcast is a good one. Uh, Woopra. Woopra is a local company, and they do a great job. I'm running Woopra on my wife's site. And we have it on the big screen TV, you know? So we're a really nerdy family. <laughs> we don't even have cable, but we've got our website up on the big screen TV. And so when someone visits from Seattle, we get a little ping on the map. It's like, there's someone from Seattle, and they're, they're still browsing. And they're like, oh, they just, yeah, right, they, they bought, they bought something, and we're gonna get that text soon. So the loop is really tight, you know? We know, you know, when the sales are gonna come in. It's, you know, it's kind of goofy, and you know, we're a pretty nerdy family, but, you know, when when the people are buying, it's really it's really a cool thing because you know there's a tight loop. We know what's coming. If the phone rings and you know Sally from Seattle, we look at the call ID. It's like oh, and she's like oh, I just bought from your house. And we're like yeah, we know. <laughs> you know. We try not to freak them out, but you can really freak people out. Whoopra W O O P R A Whoopra dot com. Rupert can freak, I and mean, you can really freak people out because not only can you watch them, but you can, if you turn it on, you can click uh, chat with the person. So while they're sitting there, you can say, hey, I see you're ready to buy that, that diet pill. <laughs> <laughs> you need some help losing weight today, you know? <laughs> we could do it, but we don't. But you, but you can chat, but in addition, we do have a little button that says, if you have a question, click here, you know, to chat with a customer service rep. Uh, and they can click on it, and then if we're there, we get an instant message, you know, and, and we can chat with them. If we're not there, it sends an email. But several years ago, I was involved in a solar solar company, solar panel company, and uh, it was a great idea, but it didn't pan out, uh, to rent solar panels. So I said, oh, this is great. It's easy to sign people up because I don't have to spend twenty five thousand dollars, you know, buying pa panels. So I bought, you know, nine thousand dollars worth of Google AdWords, and I made blog posts and blogs for all fifty states. I own NewEnglandSolarPanels.com, FloridaSolarPanels.com. I mean, it goes on and on. And I was the number one salesperson for the company, of course, that we were renting, so we weren't selling anything. But how did that happen? It wasn't necessarily my AdWords or my spending or all that sort of kung fu, but what happened was people came to the website and, and they asked the question, I immediately had the follow-up answer. And solar panel, you can't imagine, even if you know, you're renting solar panels, no one's ever done that before. I mean, the, the emails and the, and, the, and the comments that would, would just be pages and pages. But I patiently answered every question, and what that what that does is, every time you give a response to the customer or the prospect, you're developing trust, you're developing a sense of hey, this guy knows what he's talking about, and he cares enough to respond. And so we would go through, and just one by one pick off their objections or their concerns. And so we just, I mean, my wife and I, we were like. It's a little like we rented like 600 solar panel you know, contracts. Be, wasn't again because of the advertising, was, but it was because of the feedback and the response. So, is there a way for people to contact you? Do you even know they're visiting your site? You don't have to go so crazy as to have it up on your big screen TV, but uh, you should be able to provide feedback to people. Uh, if you, there's no reason why 
none of this software costs any money. Uh, Looper is free. At the low end, most of these things are called free, freemium. You familiar with the term freemium? Freemium is like, at the low end, it's free. And if you're a bigger company and you're gonna have 100,000 page views a month, eh, maybe it's $25 or $35 a month. But at the very, very low level, it's free. Kind of gets you hooked. If you start doing well and you get more traffic, well then, of course you're gonna keep with it because it's done well. Well, some of you are just building your businesses and you say, I don't know, I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready to launch. What do I do? Well, how many of you are familiar with launch pages? I mean, not so many. Launch pages are pages, they're coming soon pages. Uh, you put up a website in WordPress and then you turn on what's called like a maintenance mode. So you're working on it in the background. You're developing the themes, you're getting all, everything fixed up, but it's not ready yet. And uh, there's, there are several plugins that will put up a page and just collect the emails. Sign up, we're coming soon. Maybe you read a press release, maybe you saw us on TV, maybe you were on TV last night by surprise. Suddenly you were discovered, no one knew, you're the best break dancer in Plano. I don't know, something weird. <laughs> and now you got, you got an album to sell, or you got something to sell, a video. And so you're building that website really fast, but you don't want to lose, especially with social media. If you tweet something crazy and people want to hear more from you, you have a window of opportunity. So the Coming Soon page gives people a chance to put in their email, and it, it'll hook you into like a MailChimp, you're familiar, with, familiar with most people. Mailchimp is pretty awesome. It's like a vertical response or a constant contact. It enables you to to create a newsletter and build a, a mailing list and do the mailings without you getting labeled as a spammer, because they take all the safeguards. If you send too many emails that are spammy, they're going to tell you. If your if your unsubscribe rate is too high, they're going to tell you. Uh, if you're Abuse rate is too high. I mean, by too high, I mean like you send out a thousand emails and four people say that you're abusing them, and there you're gonna you're gonna be on uh, warned by Mailchimp. You really need to fix this. So it's a great system, and when people bounce, bounces are when the emails go out, but then there's no it's incorrectly typed or it it comes back to you. In the old days, if you weren't monitoring your bounces, what happened? You're You'd start, you continue to send out that email, you didn't know it was bouncing, you send to a Hotmail account that wasn't live for like the last four years. Forget about it. The entire Hotmail network is never gonna receive an email from you. Because Hotmail says, this person's a complete idiot. He's not cleaning the mail on the list. He's sending to a name that's been dead for four years. He's obviously a spammer. So MailChimp and Vertical Response and those kind of places, they take care of the bounces. This is, that, that sort of automation is just, it's, it's priceless. In fact, uh, some of the big names in, in, the, in the business and marketing world didn't really know about that. They were sending out, I read about this, and sending out emails and didn't know why they were getting labeled as a scammer, didn't know what, what was happening. And if you don't clean up, if you don't work your mailing list properly, it's gonna be a big mess. So MailChimp helps keep you clean. So that's your coming soon page. Uh, you can gather addresses for your MailChimp and then you know, build your newsletter. Now newsletters are really scary because who, who wants to write a newsletter? Who wants to be a publisher? It's a lot of work. Uh, but if you're building a blog and you're writing a blog and you're doing anything awesome like content marketing that we talked about this morning and all year, you're gonna wanna drip that out on a regular basis. And within MailChimp you can do something called RSS to email. RSS to email is like a tireless factory worker. Working two, three, four in the morning with no overtime, no unemployment tax, nothing like that. It's awesome. Basically, what you do is you tie in your RSS feed. You know, who knows, what, who doesn't know what an RSS feed is? Uh, RSS feed is just basically a list of posts that you do most recently. So your blog, your main, uh, your, your main blog feed would just be a list of the latest 10 posts to say. Or you can have an RSS feed for just posts tagged with the tag newsletter or in the category of help. So your WordPress blog is built in. It's a built-in marketing machine. It's a built-in content 
categorization in database machine. So when you write a blog post, you don't willy-nilly say, ah, who cares, just put it under uncategorized. You should really think about what category you're gonna put it in that helps the search engines figure out what your blog post is about and tag it properly with the tags. So you have two ways, a sort of a hierarchical, important way to categorize your blog post and a sort of non-hierarchical, what they call taxonomy, sort of a, a horizontal way to, to categorize your blog posts. And when you do that, you have the ability to say, just send out newsletters that are tagged with the word newsletter. Or just send out newsletters that are tagged with month, monthly, or what have you. So then you build in, and there's a video, somebody's gonna talk in, 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 with a British accent soon. So be careful, don't get freaked out. Uh, and, and it's gonna give you a quick overview of, um, of the MailChimp RSS to MailChimp feed. Oh. That's coming up in two more slides. But you're using web forms to, to gather information. If your contact form, your subscription form, your project request form, you use a generated content form. All these forms are a way to help you develop, develop a dialogue with your user. Here's a familiar face. If you're in the Metroplex, maybe you know Cynthia Novak. She's an astrologer. She used to have a great website, all in HTML. It was WordPress, it was a Word doc uploaded straight away to the FTP site. It had zero interactivity. I've known her for many years and finally I said, please let me do your website. I'll pay you. I said, so painful. <laughs> I said, no, 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 I will pay you. I said, okay, we worked out and we negotiated. And uh, so I pulled her website into a really nice theme. It's a, it's a, it's a responsive theme. It gets beautiful, smaller, all this good stuff. The theme I think was free, uh, beautiful. But the important part of this message is that uh, she writes the daily message every day. 365 days a year, she has a daily astrological message. And it would go out at the beginning of the month and it would just be there, like a static web page. And if you didn't pick it up at the beginning of the month and kind of print it out or mark it, you would never know what today's message was. So what do we do is you already know, giving away the punchline, of course, we put each message into a WordPress post. So, and we scheduled each post to be published at 12 o'clock each morning. So, each day the daily message comes out, WordPress cranks out the scheduled post. There's like a, a little wizard in there, I don't know, it just keeps track of the time. And then at 12 o'clock, he says, okay, it's a new day, he publishes the post and automatically kicks off a sequence of events inside WordPress. There's a little uh, program called Subscribe To. She's actually, this is a pre-MailChimp. This is a, this works just in WordPress. There's a little mailer. And she has small enough list that uh, we don't have to worry about MailChimp at the moment. But this little uh, program is called Subscribe To. And sub subscribe with a two after the number two. It's one of the free plugins in WordPress. And so, she collects the email addresses, and uh, each morning it goes out, and then in the, in the morning, you end up with a nice email, uh, and it, it has the daily message on it. If, if most of you are connected, if you go to uh, Cynthia's site, which is cynthianovac.com, uh, you'll see there's a daily message. You click on the, click on the day, today will be Saturday 27th, and it, it gives you the daily message. So her interactivity has just exploded. People are signing up. They've known her about her for years because she's written, you know, about astrology. She's in local magazines and everything. But now every day people get a, a, an email from her, and so what happens? She's trusted. People ask for the email. It's not spam, and it's valuable content information. And it, and then some Friday when somebody gets a pink slip, they say, "Oh shit." Now what am I going to do? I better call Cynthia. <laughs> Cynthia is right there, a click away, and they go on the site, and they can say, hey, I want to request a chart, and they can fill in uh, where they were born, the date, the time, and their name and email, and it goes to the bottom, and then, and, and then when they, and they click submit, it, um, it goes to PayPal, and it's a simple e-commerce, and she gets some money, and she calls the person back, and or, or just mails them their chart. 
Uh, there are other pages on this site. As, if you're live, you can see uh, where you can actually go in and uh, request a, a session with Cynthia. So it's WordPress. It's all free plugins. I lie, except for the Gravity Forms. Gravity Forms is is the is one plugin that has a lot of special things, like uh, that little date thing. You click on the calendar and it posts up a calendar and everything like that. Gravity Forms is like, what is it, forty nine, fifty nine dollars for thirty nine bucks for one site. Uh, for a developer, it's like one fifty, and you can do a thousand sites or whatever you want. But. Um, so with WordPress, we've turned her site into what was Word, uh, a Word document, uploaded to the web, just sitting there statically, to an interactive, you know, the, the money's just coming in, she's sleeping, she wakes up in the morning and the PayPal is just bulging with, you know, with chart requests. And she's not doing anything differently. That's the crazy thing. She still is writing the daily message, she was writing it before, but she was just publishing it practically like on a piece of paper. It was not, there was no interactivity. Here's where you create an auto-generated newsletter from your blog. Uh, this is the Word. This is the WordPress to uh, Mailchimp uh, video. I, I don't know if I'm going to play it because it, let's see. Hello. Here's a quick video to show you Just how this is sent your subscribers uh, your latest blog posts with Mailchimp RSS campaign. So here's a blog here, and here's the latest blog post. And people can uh, subscribe to the blog by entering their email address here. And we did this through Mailchimp. Um, in order to do this, in order to get your subscribers to receive the latest, the latest blog posts through their email, um, you need to create an RSS-driven campaign. And that's just, you can just get that from the MailChimp dashboard as soon as you log into your account. And you need to create RSS driven campaign. And straight away you're asked for the feed URL. You need to go to your blog and I think just going feed will do it. And that may go to uh, your feed burner feed. If you have the FeedBurner FeedSmith plugin installed in WordPress, so you can put that in there. Uh, you can actually send your subscribers, or if you don't have FeedBurner, I mean, it simply would be forward slash feed. I mean, your website is you know something something dot com forward slash feed, and that is what he's calling the latest feed, the last one, two, three, or four, or or however many blog posts that you've done uh, in, uh, in, that, in, that, in that setting. Tom, uh, yes. any recommendations for a feed burner replacement? Feed burner replacement. Yes, it's I recommend everybody do a feed burner replacement. My love-hate relationship with Google uh, says that feed burner's dying. I mean, they're pretty much abandoning the, the, the whole platform in, in, the, in the way that only Google can do. And there really is really one great one. It's called Feed Blitz. And Phil Hollows has been uh, running Feed Blitz for years, and I've, I've been using Feed Blitz for many, many years. And of course, Phil is having a great time with content marketing. I mean, every other day he's pointing out how Feed Burner is just going down the toilet. I mean, it's just nobody's not being supported. The Feed Burner um, uh, Twitter uh, account was closed, and 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 all of that sort of thing. So Feed Blitz costs money, you know. I mean, it's it's a paid it's a paid service, but you know, as, as Phil uh, says, you own your data at that point. I mean, you you always have access to your subscribers on Feed Blitz, and uh, and it is a great replacement. So thanks for asking. What is this that you're talking about? Oh, okay. So basically, uh, your uh, if people want to subscribe to your blog, and they want to subscribe to your feed, they want to get the feed, they can put in their email address, and Feed Burner used to provide, e Google would provide an email service. In other words, you, 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 you put out another post, and Feed Burner would say, hey, uh, Charles put out another post today, here's an email of it. You know, and so in, in Google's you know, fashion, it would send, you, send out a nice email, and there would be some Google AdSense ads at the bottom, you know, you, uh, and would just be uh, Google, Google branded and Google formatted. If you use something like Feed Blitz, you can have it branded with your 
business name and the email can go out in the same way that this goes out. It's very similar to the MailChimp way of, of, of doing it. But uh, your feed, you, you know, working your feed is, um, it's not, it's not required to use feed. But in the old days, people thought I had to use feed to get a good feed, but it's not necessary anymore. How long do you think the, before Google Plus feed comes out? For a Google Plus feed yes. comes out? I think that's what they want to do with everything, is make it Google Plus, whatever. It's gonna, everything's going to be branded Google Plus. And we should all just get a Google Plus tattoo <laughs> with our Google Plus number on it. You notice the URL is just a number. I'm sorry. <laughs> Before we start talking about Skynet, we'll continue. <laughs> Only certain categories, uh, or a combination of categories, but um, here we're just doing the whole of the feed, and you can specify a time of the day when um, the email is set, sent out. You can then specify which list you want it to be sent to, uh, you can call it, call it a name, that's just for your own benefit. And here you can have the message subject, and this is the title of the email. Here you've got to um, get to grips with MailChimp's uh, short merge tags. And you can see the default is they're using a couple of merge tags here, that's the RSS feed title, so that'll be the title of your RSS feed and uh, the date. Actually, I don't use that. You can just say latest uh, news from the blog. You can make it any subject you want, obviously. You can actually use this merge field, which is the first name. So if the subscriber put their first name in there, that will say latest news from the blog, Rob or something like that. So then you put the or from name or your from email address and, the, and they can reply to the email and, and it will come to that address. Here you can um, add some Google Analytics and information. And so on and so on. You can pick your theme. I'm going to do the voiceover and, and not British accent. You can pick your theme and you can design your little web page, uh, your little email, and it's got the header in there, and you can say, you know, here's your update, first name. And I see a lot of, too much first name usage kind of freaks people out, actually. I, I prefer not to see my first name in every email. I think it talks about how to put the title and, and all that. It's the actual email that subscribers yeah. receive. Mm -hmm. And also I put two more merge tags here, one for the title, that's the title of the blog post, and the other one for the content, content of the blog post. And then I've just written some text in there. Um, if you so you can see, basically, he's putting in two wild cards. You know, the RSS title and the RSS content full. So basically, that email is going to go out every day with however many posts were done in the last day. Uh, I, I publish a magazine quarterly, and um, so every three months, everything that's been posted to the magazine uh, gets rounded up by Mailchimp and sent out, you know, like on the 21st of every third month. And each, each of the posts is, is emailed out in full. You can specify you just want the excerpt so that people have to click through and go back to the website to read it. Uh, I think that's a little, a little obnoxious. Uh, it depends on what, you, you know, what your goals are. Uh, but the email goes out with, with, with the post. And so you can see how the daily message would be in there. You know, see title would be like daily message for October 27th, and then the content would be just that little paragraph. And the, you know, it's a beautiful automation. You can run it by the day, the week, the month. There is no three month thing. I have to turn it off in the, in the interval two months that I don't want it to go, but they, uh, this is a very powerful package. And once you have this figured out, then, then the next step is to figure out how to do an auto drip, which is basically if someone wants, signs up for a course of yours within MailChimp, you can then drip out like five or six or seven pieces of content, you know, introduction to jewelry making 101, introduction to jewelry making 102, sort of a whole series of things, and then when that's over, then take them to the next level or something like that. But the email automation is probably the most powerful thing you can do for your website because people become, if they've asked for it, they've subscribed, they trust you, 
if you give them the right information, but if you send that every morning and you send that, today is my latest sale, it's 20% off, the next day it's 25% off, I and mean, you know, you're gonna get unsubscribed really fast. Mm -hmm. And that was this morning's conversation. This is how to create, create awesome content. But once you've created the awesome content, this is how to get it to them. All right, I think we, maybe we're done with this. Okay, so what are some other things you can do? One of the other things that that we do, that I do with clients or some of my own sites is you make an FAQ, FAQ frequently asked questions. What's the beautiful thing about a frequently asked question is that once you've answered it, then you're done. You don't have to answer it ever again. It's on the website and people can find it and people are doing some searching. Uh, sometimes people don't want to send an email, they don't want to contact, they don't want to call, they don't want to interact with you. Some people are, hey, I just want to read, let me read about what this guy's doing. Uh, and when, when you create your frequently asked questions with real user questions, you're pretty, pretty much certain that you're really hitting on what people are thinking about. Because if you just sit there and say, oh, I think people are gonna ask about this, I think people are gonna ask about that, let's make an FAQ, you're, you're probably not gonna hit the mark. I mean, you just don't know what people are curious about. And so, you, it's, so WordPress has a, a plugin, uh, you know, why was my credit card declined, blah, blah, blah. You can create them yourself, and then you can create little pages like that. Uh, but they also have plugins where you can actually have people ask the question, you know. You can do that with feedback forms, do that with gravity forms. Say, hey, what's your question? And then once they ask it, then you write them an answer, and then you publish the post. So what is the, what is the, th that dialogue becomes a public post. I mean, I think, when I first started doing FAQs, it was like, oh, I can't believe you're making all that public. But now, you know, four years later, everything's public. Everybody tweets questions, everybody's posting things on Facebook, everybody's, everything's out there. So when you have that dialogue out in the public, it not only shows that you're responsive to your client, it shows that you're responsive and awesome to the rest of the world. Because they look, he, he got that question, and he answered it, and he answered it publicly, and the rest of the world can learn from that. What, what's the plugin? Uh, this particular plugin that does the frequently asked questions is WordPress extend WordPress.org forward slash extend, which is the plugin area. Uh, plugins Q dash and dash A Q and A. That's all. It is. So if you go into the WordPress backend to WordPress.org and uh, go to the plugin section and just type in either Q and A or FAQ, you can kind of look that up. Is there a way you can get the uh, FAQs to register any points for your SEO? How does your F how do, you, do your FA FAQs register points for your SEO? Can you? Can can you? you? Yes, I mean they certainly do. I mean, uh, depending on the plugin and how they format the uh, responses, you know, H1, H2, and the keywords and tags like that, each one is individual. If it's done properly with the right sort of taxonomy, like if each FAQ is done in a in a, in a taxonomy where it, when you look at the left side of your page it says FAQs, you know, and then there's a list, which most of them have that, then you can use your your Yoast SEO plugin. Now, excuse me if I sound a little crazy, but all morning I talked about WordPress and content marketing, so I'm not sure what I mentioned earlier in this talk and what I mentioned this morning, but the Yoast SEO plugin is awesome. We talked about it this morning, and it sort of, it's the new standard SEO plugin for WordPress. Previously it was the all-in-one SEO. Everybody loved the all-in-one. It was downloaded like three million times. But the Yoast SEO plugin, it'll say, do you want to do some SEO you know, work on these taxonomies as well? And one of the, in, in the list should be you know, FAQs if it's done properly. So, so you can integrate that. Y-O-S-T. Y-O-A-S-T, Yoast. Y-O-A-S-T, Yoast. It's, he's, a, he's a Dutch, you know, and it's really J-O-O-S-T. <laughs> so but, but, you know, it's pronounced Yoast, and so he spelled it that way for us, you know, gringos, I guess. I so there's your FAQ. Okay, schedule your content. WordPress has built-in scheduling. I mean, nobody wants to wake up in the morning and say, okay, tomorrow, today's, I gotta do Wednesday's post. I better write it, I better post it, I better press publish. Uh, if you like to get your pub posts published early in the morning, uh, you wanna publish your posts at the optimal time for your industry. Uh, we found, the company I work for, work with, is um, in the news business, and so we create news posts for big companies that need ongoing 
news. If I post it at 11 o'clock at night or just some random time and then we Google it, we Google the news, well, we're always Googling it ourselves, sorry. We, do. we want to see where we are. Even right after we publish, we'll be in the Google News category I mean, within minutes. However, the next morning I said to my partner, I said, hey, you know, we're in the Google News, just check it out. You know, he, he typed that and we weren't there anymore. But we were way down the list. Well, what had happened was there was a lot of news between when, we, when I published it in the night and 8 o'clock the next morning. So if you want to be in Google News, think about the real-time aspect of publishing. You might want to publish it 7, 8, 9 in the morning. You want to publish it at, at a precise time that would be valuable to, to, to other people. I find that if you're publishing at 7 or 8 in the morning and you hit that, you hit that publish button, other people who might want to pick up that story like for instance, we're writing stories that are pretty much online press releases, so we want the story to be picked up. We want people to grab the image, scrape the content, and republish on their blog, because that's the point of it. It's, it's promotion, it's PR. So when you publish it is important, and where it, the time you publish it will affect your real-time rankings in, in the search engines. It's not easy to get real-time ranking, and, and, and when I say this now, you're gonna go home and maybe do a post and you're not gonna show up real-time, I don't know. But our site's been online for a long time, and it's about the news, so sort of in Google's good graces in that regard. But WordPress has its own scheduling. You can schedule just typing in, you know, when you go, just before you click publish, there's a little button that says when, you know, and you edit, and you, you click that little button, and it tells you the date. But if you have this plugin called Editorial Calendar, and you literally get a calendar on your thing, and you can drag your posts, you know, you can click on the headline and drop it down on the exact day you want and change the time and so you can have the whole month scheduled out when you want to publish. That's what it looks like in the back end of like Cynthia Novak's where it's like every day there's one post that's going to go out at 12 o'clock in the morning. And so all those things are automated. So you can schedule your content or if you have multiple editors, there's a plugin called Edit Flow. Edit Flow is done by the by automatic, it's, it's, it's by the folks, the home office that develop WordPress. And it's pretty awesome because it gives you a calendar and it also gives you a custom status. So you can define, uh, for instance, we've got, with news, we have like three or four news writers, journalists writing. And so, you know, you'll assign that we might have, there might be a pitch, the first thing is a pitch, it's an idea for a story, then a story's been assigned to a particular writer, then someone's working on the draft, and it, someone's still working on it, it's, it's in progress, maybe half the article's written, still waiting for some photography, then we have a ready for SEO, then that sort of goes to me where I have to kind of do all the keywords and figure out why there's no H2s or H3 headings and all that kind of stuff in the article, make sure there's not too many keywords in the article, things like that. Uh, then I send it for final editorial review and then it gets published. So WordPress gives you what? Draft, schedule, draft, schedule, I don't even know what I'm scheduled, published. There's like two or three. But this expands it and you can create you can create whatever you want. You can create uh, you know one, two, three, or four um, statuses, custom statuses. All right. WordPress for small business. A lot of, how many people here see clients on, you know, take appointments? You're a massage therapist, you're a business consultant, you're a, yeah, even if you're a web designer, you take people and, hey, I'll, I'll help set up an appointment with you. Uh, you can use a plugin called uh, Appointee, uh, A-P-P, well, there it is, uh, Appointee, A-P-P-O-I-N-T-Y. And Appointee is a third party, uh, a third party app that um, runs on a third-party site, but you embed the calendar on your WordPress blog. So with a couple of embed tags, you're basically setting up a, a place for people to schedule a uh, massage or a, a appointment or a consultation if you're a tax attorney or uh, I have, you know, accountants or whatever have you. You can use uh, this plugin with Appointee and um, get, people can schedule. Uh, their session with you. It's very powerful. And, you know, again, it's two in the morning, someone realizes it's tax day, you know, next week, and they need to contact you. So, 
you don't want to get a phone call. Does this add it right into your uh, own appointment calendar, like your on your iPhone? Or? I'm, I'm sure a pointing does. See, they have, they have a little five phone thingy there, so I'm sure it has a button. There's really only like once you make an appointment. Um, there's just it can, it'll, you can push it out to your own. It probably pushes it out to your own calendar. I'm not exactly sure. Cause I set it up for a client like two years ago, so the before you know before the iPhone and all that stuff. So you have to check. But it's not the only one. Appointee was the first, but there are probably others. And the other big one that I use a lot is um, AppThemes.com. AppThemes is actually like the granddaddy of theme applications. If you run, uh, if you want to run a classified like a Craigslist, their flagship product is called Classy Press, and uh, you know it's ninety nine dollars. You can also get all of them for like a package price. Uh, lets you lets you run a classified site. If you have a small community or a neighborhood or a group of WordPress developers like here, maybe I would do that. You can develop a classified website set it up with your PayPal and charge people, either make it free or charge people and you know, in a in a couple of days time after you finish developing and you've got an online business. Uh, depending on your niche, depending on, you know, how well you market, this could be a couple bucks a month, a couple bucks a day, or it could be, you know, a, a really big business. It, just because Craigslist, you know, is around doesn't mean you can't do it. Job roller is another one that really fits our sort of uh, niche here. How many times a week do I get called? Where can I find a work rest web, you know, web developer, a WordPress developer, you know, somebody not busy, you know, who's an artist? And I got a little list and I, I send out some names here and there and then the guy calls me back and says, no one called me back. Who's in this room? I get, the, get deemed. No one called me back. I'm like, well, they're busy. You know, it's hard to find a WordPress developer. It's not really busy. It's a great business to be in. Um, uh, hopefully next year I get myself, I'll get a job roller uh, subdomain on dfwwp.org and that way you guys can put, if you're available, if you're looking for a WordPress uh, person. Clippers coupons, uh, quality control is uh, uh, customer support, and Vantage is a business directory, so if, just a list of businesses. I'm really losing my voice now. All right, that was the last slide. Thank you, Matt. I'd like to thank Matt. Matt Mullenweg founded the whole WordPress thing and we've been uh, having a great time ever since. Any questions? For, for scheduling posts, how, how far do you think people should write their posts before you schedule? Like a couple days in advance or? It's whatever you prefer. I mean, if, you're, if, you, if, you're, if your topic is still valid, I mean, if you know that it's gonna be interesting Halloween topic for next year's Halloween. You can write it today. <laughs> yeah, it's up to you. This is maybe a bit off topic, but I, it's a question I wanted to have answered. Uh, is there a way to integrate uh, ASP.NET structure to WordPress? What do you mean by structure? Well, uh, I have a, a site that uh, has a database uh, in it that is you know, designing that ASP.NET. <coughs> And is it, I know WordPress is PHP, right? WordPress is PHP. And, so is and all a, previous attempts to mesh, you know, uh, ASP and, and PHP, it's, it's been small singularities and black holes right in that town. Mm -hmm. It's been a very dangerous process. Not very a, much. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it's like oil and water. In this case, it's just swapping URLs and uh, making it look seamless. Yeah, swapping URLs, making it look amazing. If, if part of your site, like you got like this back end of parts and it's all in the ASP database and that's on one part, and then you want to have your blog in another part, it's easy to put your blog in forward slash blog, you know, and let it be, or forward slash news, and let it be itself. But you, the two, you can't read, you know, to read and write and work, the WordPress database is pretty, uh, it's pretty simple, but it's a PH, it's a MySQL database. And, you don't want to be messing. It won't work with anything else. It doesn't play friendly. Any other questions? Well, great. Fantastic. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this week's session. Make sure and check back for future video sessions from the Dallas WordPress Meetup group and other sessions I attend as I attend them. 
And if you like what I'm doing with Conference Showcase, I'd ask you to consider DillDomains.com the next time you buy a domain name or website hosting. Now, DillDomains.com is my GoDaddy reseller account, plain and simple. So if you like GoDaddy or if you're using GoDaddy presently, please consider using DillDomains.com to buy your GoDaddy stuff. Well, that's all for today. So until next week's episode, this is your host, Gary Leland, saying goodbye and thanks for watching.